Good morning, ELA. Um, welcome to week however many of remote learning. By now you should have heard that we will be remote for the remainder of the 2020 calendar year. I know this news might sound frustrating um, and possibly overwhelming, but we have to do what's best for our communities and what's going to keep us all safe. So we'll get through this together. We'll keep trying to get, make online as, as helpful and interactive as possible. Um, but please make sure that you are doing your part to, to be at class, get the work done and stay on top of your stuff. We will continue with the normal remote schedule we've been working with for the past two weeks, except this week for me. The reason being is I was supposed to be out of class today to help my mom with some family matters. But since we're not actually in the building, I have no sub for you. So what we will do this week is you will watch this video today. There is no work due on Empower today, but your goal is to keep making progress with your memoir brainstorm or maybe starting to work on the next pieces or any missing or late work that you still have from past. We will Zoom this week on Thursday, Friday instead. So if you are with me fourth hour, We'll zoom on Thursday. If you're with me for seventh hour, we will zoom on Friday. Um, so this is the only week it will be that way. I'm sorry to confuse you, but I want to make sure that I still get to see you and help you out online this week, even though I'm not in the classroom today. Um, so to start for mindful minutes, I have this cool video about this uh, magician who makes two people believe that they are invisible. Um, if you haven't seen this show, Magic for Humans on Netflix, it's kind of interesting. If you want to check it out. Um, but I thought it'd be nice to watch this nice light-hearted video. And while you're watching, I want you to consider, you know, who would you be in this situation? There's two particular people that he makes um, invisible. And how would you respond? Would you respond more like Brandon or Jonathan? And what do you think that says about you and how you react in situations that life brings you? Additionally, how can we characterize these two people? Like they're two very different people that react different ways. So how might their speech, their looks, their actions, um, their effect on other people show us what sort of person they might be? After you've watched that little mindful video, you are going to move on to uh, practicing our daily language. This week, we're going to be working on parts of speech, and then we will use those parts of speech to make complex sentences at the end of the week. So you don't have to turn this in today if you don't want to. If you want to turn it in today, cool, you're welcome to. But this will technically be due Thursday, Friday of this week, depending on when your normal class is. So the parts of speech, the English language is full of thousands upon thousands of words, and it can be really confusing. Uh, but all of those, those words fit into eight different categories or buckets. This is what we call parts of speech. So there are eight different parts of speech. Every single word fits into one of those eight categories. So this video right here is super cheesy, but I do kind of wish this guy was my, was my grandpa. Um, but he gives us an acronym, fancy word for a statement or phrase that would help us remember the different eight parts of speech. It's Ivan Cap. So he's going to explain that little thing to you to help you remember what they are in the first place. And then over here, you need to be on presentation mode to be able to use this function. So if your page looks like this as you're move, moving through the lesson, you're going to want to click on the present button that will put it into presentation mode. And then when you click on these various words here, it will take you to a page that teaches you about it, right? So what is a noun? Hopefully we know this by now, but a noun is people, places, and things, All right? So you'll learn a little bit about what the word is and it'll give you some examples, okay? Um, and you'll do that for each word. Then on Empower, you have an activity to complete right here called Parts of Speech. When you go in there, there is a document that looks like this. You will complete this document after learning about all the words. So I would fill it out as you go. So for example, when you're here and you click on Interjection and you go to the page to learn all about Interjection and the different examples, you can then head back to your Part of Speech document type in a definition in your own words, and then provide two to three word examples that are examples of an interjection. You'll do that for each of these parts of speech, 
before Thursday, Friday of this week. Again, you do not have to submit this today, but I would, that way you're staying up on your work. Additionally, you should be working on your memoir, right? So remember, let's see, this is easy for you guys. There we go. <laughs> All right, so um, don't forget, we are working on writing our own flash memoir. This is gonna be a, a story that is about a very significant moment in our life. And these are the five different things you need to have in your memoir as you start to write. So be considerate of how you're gonna zoom in. Um, how are you gonna write in a way that is clear to your personality? I want to hear your personality when you write. Um, what's gonna be the message of your story? What did you learn? What are you ultimately gonna walk away with. How are you going to be super descriptive? And that's what some of these other early documents are about, is getting the interesting language, the details down, so that when we write the story, we can keep our audience engaged and, and make it appealing. Lastly, this should be an honest story. So be honest with yourself about what went wrong, what went right, and how you were feeling in this moment. Um, these are the steps so far we've gone through. You should already have a most memorable moments list. If you don't, you'll return to that. It's the first couple steps of the memoir brainstorm assignment and empower. You will also journal about two to three topics that you wrote down in this list. Most of you have already completed that. Once you've journaled about a couple of topics to feel what they're like, you will then pick one topic for your final um, unit assessment for this unit. Um, once you've picked your final topic, then it's time to start brainstorming and remembering this moment. And this is when you want to really get into those descriptive statements. So if we go to my example brainstorm, which is on Empower for you, you can see what I have written down for each of these example boxes. One thing I noticed when I was looking at the ones that have been submitted already is that we're failing to be even more detailed. Like some people said, you know, you know, this thing felt soft. Well, what else feels soft? Or how else can you add to that description? Soft like what? Soft like leather, soft like butter, soft like silk. You know, there's different kinds of soft. And so if you can compare the sensory to something that it connects to, it makes it a little bit more descriptive and interesting. So if you feel stuck, return back to my example document to figure out how you might fill this in. If you're ready to do so today, the next step would be to move on to completing a steel chart for your two main characters, right? Good writers characterize their characters. They add in different things that they are wearing or that they say, their actions, how people respond to them. These are how we better understand the characters in the story. So you will need to include the same sort of details about your characters so that they come alive for the reader. So you're gonna pick your main two characters to complete a steel chart for. When you do this and you have a finished one, it might look something like this, okay? Here I have the topic of my particular memoir. We got our car stuck in the jungle. I have my two main characters. I'm the first main character, so you will end up being one of your characters. And then have a descriptor here. Like in this particular moment, I was sort of the doer. I was going and doing some things. Um, then the other character in my story is the best friend that was with me. Her name is Alyssa. And she was sort of like the prepper. She was back at the car prepping things. So that's how I'm describing the two of us in this moment. Then I went through and I thought about my story. And I was like, if I was telling this story, what would be something that I said? in during the story in the moment if um if i was telling the story what would be something i would say that Alyssa said so these are going to be actual direct quotes that you're going to place into your story as you start to work secondly what thoughts went through my head as we were in this moment what sort of thoughts was i having that i could include in my story that would be interesting and then i do the same thing for mother character Alyssa. What do I know she was thinking about? Because we talked about it after. And if we didn't talk about it, then I would just guess based on what I know about Alyssa. What do I think her thoughts would be in this moment? Additionally, I looked at the impact of others. There was this little girl I interacted with in this moment, and I was really upset and crying. And she placed her little hand on my shoulder and she said, Esta bien. She was really sweet. And it was like this beautiful moment where I was clearly vulnerable and scared, and she 
felt like she needed to give me some support and love. Um, and then next actions, right? So I had a moment where I had to strap on my hiking boots. I was in a skirt and a tank top, but I was like, ah, just as long as I have my boots, I can hike out of this jungle. Um, and then Alyssa was uh, driving the car. So I used that moment to talk about some actions that she did. And then lastly, what we look like, what we're wearing. At the end, you're going to try to write a small conversation between those two characters, yourself and someone else in this moment that you might include in your story. All right. So this is your steel characterization chart for your particular characters. So this document, your parts of speech practice and your example, um, characterization and dialogue for your characters in your memoir both are going to be due on thursday friday of this week depending on when you normally have me for class if you are finished with all five of those things already there are a few folks you are welcome to moving on to typing a rough draft of your story this is the last step available to you in empower at the moment um, but consider if you are taking this next step you want to tell a good story. So think about where you might start your action. You don't have to start at the beginning. You could throw your reader straight into the middle of the story to begin and then take them back to the beginning after you've caught their attention. You'll want to use your brainstorm pl plan, your characterization charts, and your initial journal entry and put those pieces together to write an interesting story. So when I sit down to write my rough draft, I'm going to include all of these details, or at least the ones that I think are relevant to my theme topic, okay? I'm also going to include these details because this is how my characters will come alive. Then once I have a rough draft, we'll be ready to move forward from there. Sorry I can't be with you today. We will Zoom on Thursday, Friday of this week instead. I will see you on the internet then. I hope you have a lovely start to your third remote week. Take care.